DA, the DC has a nice ring to it, huh? Absolutely, initials. <laughs> Congratulations. What was your reaction when you found out you were going to be the Chargers defensive coordinator? Um, shocked, excited, um, anxious. All those emotions running through my body at the same time. How helpful is it, though, that you have the familiarity of this team? You've been with them the last couple of years, and now you can use that to your advantage. I think it's very important. You know, when you, when you come in as a, as a new staff, the relationship part of, of building a, a, a relationship with the players is from ground zero. Uh, we're not starting there, obviously. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be in a new role uh, with more leadership uh, in that role. So we're excited about the relationships that we do have uh, from the previous years being here. When you were at Tennessee, you were at one point the DB's coach and the defensive coordinator. How did that role prepare you for this one? More responsibility. You know, taught me how to lead the staff, um, taught me how to lead the players, um, not just focus on one aspect of a unit um, or one aspect of a staff. So it allowed me to be myself. My personality was, was brought out, um, and it really prepared me for now you know, to be able to lead these guys. Who's had an influence on your coaching style? Oh, my coaching style. I'll have to say Coach Saban. Um, you know, he's, you know, he's a secondary guy. So being with him four years uh, really helped mold me defensively. Um, Kirby Smart uh, was another guy uh, that taught me a lot. Um, Jeremy Pruitt, uh, Mike Turk was my first boss at Huntington College back in Montgomery. He actually coached me in college at Troy, and then he became a head coach and hired me fresh out of college. So a lot of different you know trees, a lot of different you know vibes, a lot of different personalities that mold me to who I am now. What are sort of the things that you take from them? Is it how they prepare? how they coach specifically on the field, the stuff that we see in the classroom, what is it? I think it's a little bit of, of all of that. You know, Coach Saban is so detailed. You know, he's on the grass, managing the staff, managing the players, you know, holding everybody accountable. Um, Coach, Coach Turk is an offensive mind. Um, Coach Smart is a lot like Coach Saban, you know, defensive minded guys. So really just grabbing, you know, what I learned along the way, just molding it and, and, and building my own brand. What's it gonna be like collaborating with Brandon Staley now at this point in your career? It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. You know, Coach is a, is a brilliant mind defensively. You know, hopefully I can add some ideas to, to him and, and we can put this thing together um, you know, smoothly and, and keep it rolling. So here at the Combine, now as the DC, how does that affect your approach to how you treat this week as, how, as opposed to how you've done it in the last couple of years? The same approach as when I was a secondary coach. You know, now I'm just using that energy and, and putting it throughout the whole defense. You know, formal meetings, informal meetings, you know, meeting with guys, you know, watching those guys work out on the field. I'm actually going to be on the field with the defensive backs, um, which I did last year. Um, so that gives you more of an up close and personal um, feel for those guys when they're in their element training. Uh, for what they what they see to be their dreams. Is it exciting to have a bit of a larger role to kind of like oversee, as you've mentioned, multiple parts, multiple positions now here in Indy where this is really kind of the start of what will become of the 2023 roster? Absolutely. You know, when, when you look at the draft, you know, you cannot predict what, what guys are going to get drafted at. Um, but you want to get to know guys as much as you can because let's say you don't draft a player and then a player goes to a certain organization, but you may get that player in free agency down the road. So you want to gather as much information um, as you can on the, on, on the individual, you know, to, to see who he is. So when it comes down the road again, uh, maybe you can make a good decision on it. Derwin James tweeted, you are one of the hardest workers that he's known. What's your overall coaching philosophy? Um, relationships with the players, you know, uh, like I said earlier, it's about give and take, especially in NFL ball. Um, you know, what do you guys like? What style are you? What technique do you like? And if I can see something that's, that can maybe help them, you know, become better, then we introduce that to them. Um, so I think it's a lot of give and take, you know, listen to the players, coach them hard, accountability, you know, make sure everybody's pulling the rope in the same direction. Where do you see this Chargers defense going in 2023? I think we can be as good as we want to be. You know, I think we have a lot of good players in place. Um, that's why we're here at the draft to, you know, infuse our team with more good players to build on what we have. But I think we can be as good as we want to be. And then lastly, what do you want Chargers fans to know about you? Obviously, you've been here the last couple of years, but now in this elevated position, what do you want them to know? This is going to sound real cliche, but I have no hobbies. My hobby is football. <laughs> really? Okay. I have no hobbies. I don't golf. I don't, you know, do anything mm -hmm. like that. So it's all football and trying to figure out a way to make us better. It's not a bad thing to hear, though. Yeah, yeah. Especially, if, you, especially if you're a coach. That's good. That's <laughs> it. Congrats. Thanks, Haley. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.